a metric ton of new images, not only on the Misk Odyssey, but also on the Vulture and the Hull A and the Scorpius and the Banu Merchantman all in one episode. This was an epic episode of Inside Star Citizen. Let's dive right into it. Now, I'm not going to play the whole thing. There is just way too much. But starting off in the very beginning, uh, John Crew there and Paul Jones are going to run us through a couple of features of it. I love, well, we've seen the concept images already. Uh, nothing new to add there, but they do show us something very cool in about three seconds from now, which is that ring elevator, which we were discussing uh, just yesterday. And here it is right over there. So if you're still pondering whether you should or should not purchase the Musk Odyssey, uh, look at that. How, how can you not? <laughs> Uh, first of all, I think calling it a ring would be wrong because those bars are only on the sides. You see in the front, it's open over there. It's also open in the back, allowing the passengers to get in and out of it. But there it is, uh, the one cool little gimmick, which I think will just convince so many people, and by people, I mean me, to buy this ship. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, cool to see that in action. I was curious, and uh, that's exactly how we thought it would happen. Uh, Paul Jones goes on to say... In terms of the ship from front to back, there's a lot more of that cool levitation tech. There's a lot more cool levitation tech front to back. I don't see any other places. Is there some sort of surprise somewhere? Uh, there could be more elevators, I guess, from the ship to the surface, which may use the same technology as that. But I don't see anything else which could possibly use levitation from there. But I guess we'll have to find out when the ship is released in the year 2032. We spoke about this already, and a lot of people have asked, is the ship capable of mining other things other than quantanium? And no. Well, I don't think it can. There's no point. The entire point of the mining operations on the ship is specifically to get quantanium. You aren't taking the ship to go mining rocks for anything else. You're specifically mining quantanium to refuel, to refine it for fuel. That is its only purpose, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the only thing you were limited to. All right, this is something we forgot to mention also in the previous video was that there's a cartography table. Uh, you're exploring, the hologram comes up, and you can basically plot your course and look where you're going in this beautifully placed right behind the pilot's cartography table, just like the Carrick has. Now, moving away out of the bridge, we have the escape pods. As I mentioned before, the escape pods are in a great location, right next to the bridge and right in front where the quarters, where your crew quarters are. Here we have a look at one of the crew quarters. I think this is one of the larger rooms. You see the guy standing at the entrance over there. It's kind of a, an open area, and this is where the bed is. Uh, so important. Role players love this kind of stuff where you have your own personal space, and because of physicalized inventory, you can probably decorate it, drop stuff, or if you're just messy like I am, uh, <laughs> just drop whatever you have on the ground, and uh, maybe one day you'll pick it up. And now making their way to this absolutely cavernous, enormous hangar. Uh, they mentioned that they built the, the ship around this. Interesting that they would mention that, but they, they definitely went with it along the, the big side. Uh, I mean, they could have closed it off, but they also wanted it to be open this way so you can see. Now, if you have a cool little ship, you want to put it in there. It's nice to walk past, admire it, take a look at what you have, or if you're carrying cargo, to see all the cargo piling up over there. Uh, I love this feature. I love that they made it kind of scenic, and they give you a way to look down on it of really in there just as like the rule of cool you can just sort of sit there and just see space well no it's not there for the rule of cool this is the tractor and mining operations which are critical to the ship functioning <laughs> Uh, but it is very nicely designed. It's wide open. So uh, as Paul Jones says, you can sit there and kind of admire and look around at space while someone's flying it. If you're into the scenic part of it, it is rather uh, relaxing when you are out in space and just uh, watching a sunrise or a sunset. It's almost like meditation to a lot of people who play this game. So a very important area of the ship for that. And there's also an observation room at the back, which they did not show us. So the Odyssey is the carrot. In my mind, it's a carrot killer. Oh, now the fact that Jared left it in there. <laughs> I want to talk more about this. Uh, he calls it a carrot killer, and the first thing I did was, okay, that's going to kick off a firestorm, right? And uh, yes, it did. Uh, a thread started by uh, JPO saying, CIG shouldn't be designing ships to invalidate other ships. You know what? I'm going to make a separate video on this topic alone, but let me just say, first of all, I, I think that JPO must be new. This is an attack on him. I'm just uh, assuming he is new. Uh, one second. Yeah, 2019, all right? And 
The fact that the background of this screen is an Aurora is a wonderful segue into the next video I'm going to make talking about this topic because the Aurora was originally the beginner ship and what came out after that? You guys have been around since the beginning. What came out? What beginner ship came out after the Aurora? The Mustang. Was the Mustang better? I would say yes. So is this something new that CIG does by improving upon designs? Does the Mustang invalidate the Aurora? Hey, I still fly the Aurora. You know what? Let me stop there. I think that's a big topic to touch on. I'll make a video about that next. But uh, subscribe if you want to hear the story about that. I'll explain why he's wrong. And also, he says this is a kick in the face to people who dished out hundreds of dollars. Well, it's not a kick in the face to everyone, I think. Um, there are plenty of people who are more than happy to have both a Carrick and the Odyssey, or a lot of people just more than happy to upgrade the Carrick, if that is the case. Uh, we'll discuss, this is actually a pretty good topic to dig down into, uh, because I'm sure that people feel the same way, at least uh, 26 people do. Uh, so we'll do that at a later stage, but let's finish this video. There is a ton to see more. All right, moving on to the Hull A. Now, does the Hull A invalidate the Freelancer? Absolutely, I think it does. The Hull A is a way better hauler, and look at it. It looks great. Solo players are being treated with so many cool ships. Not only the Hull A, but also the Vulture. They'll show us also. I think these ships are amazing. This makes me want to try some hauling. Uh, they've done a beautiful job with it. Very different from the original design that kind of slimmed it a bit at the back. Here we see these, I guess, magnetic uh, cargo holders. This is what the, the big cargo containers will just simply latch onto. This is the mechanism which extends them and brings them in. And here we see the actual mechanism closing in. Uh, nice cockpit over there. And obviously you have your own livable space. The interiors look so good. They've done a wonderful job at improving what interior space looks like. Look at that. I can see so many people just saying... I want to live in this ship as a solo player. This is my hauler. I sleep there. I wake up in space. I go get stuff. I haul it somewhere else. When my session is done, I go back to bed, log out. Perfect. Perfect ship. Moving on, there's some images uh, related to refueling on the Starfarer. Uh, a very important ship. If you're a Carrick owner, <laughs> because you can't refine your fuel, I'll stop. But uh, yeah, lots of Starfarer owners bought that for the refueling. Very excited to see that coming to game. And here we have another very exciting ship, the Vulture. Now, Salvage, not in the game yet, but this is what the solo Salvage ship will be. Much like the Prospector for mining, the Salvage, it is the Vulture. The internals looking good. Nice industrial-looking cockpit with wide views. And moving on to the Scorpius. Now, oh, the Scorpius is going to invalidate the Hornet. <laughs> so I'm really curious about this ship. Uh, I bought the concept of it. Uh, I'm wondering between the F8 Lightning and the Scorpius, both heavy fighters, what's the deal? What's the, deal? What's the story? Uh, I don't really know. Um, I like the look. I like the X-Wing type look of it. I uh, will have to see how they handle. Here we have an interesting look. Let me just go back a frame over there. Looks like to me what we have here is your weapons rack, maybe a little bit of cargo. And uh, I can't make out what that box in front, is that the the chair to the cockpit? I don't think so. I don't know. Let me know if you know what that is, but seems to be a couple of things opening up, allowing you access to several components or storage areas in the Scorpius. And last but not least, we have the Banu Merchantman. Now, this is the white boxed exterior of what they're working with at the moment. Uh, question, is this simply the landing strut or is this going to be strut slash stairs with entrance into the ship? Because I don't see that area at the bottom there, which is supposed to be some sort of grand staircase, which they have in the concept. Does that stick around? Uh, it would simplify things if they simply added the stairs into the front there, but I don't know if they made the change yet. So tough to tell what it looks like from the outside. I mean, this is very, very simple mock-up, but uh, more of a, the interior here. Uh, it's changed. It's changed a lot from the early concepts. And moving on to some interior images now that they'll show us of the Banu, some interesting ones, especially when it comes to the back engine part of it. First of all, let's go with these a lot of talk about. So the bridge, there we go. Uh, where is the captain seated? These two are probably your co-pilot and gunner seats up in the front over there. We don't have a clear shot. Here is the turret, which is absolutely massive. Uh, they spent a lot of time around that for some reason. I think that's the shrine. And uh, here's something interesting. Engineering. 
and it all moves. Uh, so this is a departure from engineering of other ships where there's, well, actually there's a couple of them with movement, but this is absolutely enormous on scale as far as things moving around, just making it look busy. Um, banner technology, or was it Geon? Looks cool. I'll be very, very interested to hear how that sounds like when that is all done. And finishing off with a little bit of a poke at Voltron, you have Raftron using the Raft. <laughs> Making a little, uh, this is 100% Jared. He's like, yeah, you know what? It's my time to shine. And he whooped this together just to uh, make us laugh, which he did. So that's it. Uh, an excellent episode of Inside Star Citizen. I'm going to make another video about the drama that uh, Paul Jones has caused and try to clear that up. <laughs> As always, guys, if you enjoy my content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.